Now that you know the fundamentals of merging to multiple records per page, allow me to share some important details and tips. First, and this applies to all data merge projects, think creatively. How can you leverage the data you have about someone to create even more personalization in each project? The name tags we created used only a single merge field for the person's first name. To encourage interaction between people during the party, I added a place for the Jambox customer to write in a favorite jam, jelly, or preserve flavor. That means we're back to giving people Sharpies and creating a backup at the registration table. But these are customers of the Jambox company. Jambox knows much more about them than just their first names, so let's use some of what we know. Here's an example of a name tag sticker that leverages that data to further personalize party attendees' name tags. We've kept the first name. This is a party, and we want to encourage easy conversation, but also added the customer's last name and company name. In place of the company name, we could have put hometown or state, too. And we're using the customer's ordering history to fill in the favorite flavor at the bottom. Simply including the value of the customer's most frequently ordered flavor does that. It makes the reception table line move faster by eliminating any hand customization necessary, provides a spark for conversation between party goers, and it makes each customer feel personally recognized and more valued by the company. By supplying something as simple as the favorite flavor, customers will feel the company spent time personally researching them, that the company recognizes and values them as individuals. It creates warm fuzzies, but all we did was include a piece of data already part of any customer's ordering history. Try not to make changes in the merge document. If something needs to be changed, change it in the design and re-merge. Of course, that's not always possible. Sometimes the data source is gone. The original document is never sent to the designer who needs to make changes to the merged final result, or for some other reason, you need to make changes to the merge document. Prepare for that by being smart. Use styles when you can. Let's say you send the final proof of the name tags through the approval process, and someone says, change a font. With 20 name tags, you'll manually change 20 tax frames. With 500 name tags? Yeah, sure, you can use fine chains to do the substitution, but even that's not as easy as simply editing one setting in a paragraph style. Styles and settings that are in use in your design before you merge will be carried through to the merge document and all its copies of the original design objects. That means paragraph styles, character styles, object styles, table styles, cell styles, stroke styles, color swatches, hyphenation exceptions, and everything else. Set these up on your design, and they'll be attached to every copy in the merge document. You can then make sweeping revisions of every copy with a single change to the style or attribute. Label sheets shift and misalign easily, so play it safe by designing well beyond the borders of the labels, creating your own bleed areas. Extend your label artwork out beyond the borders of the label. If there's a space between the labels, that's easy to do. Don't take the design all the way to the edge of the next label unless both labels are identical, but go out a little bit, about an eighth of an inch if you can. Similarly, keep the content inside labels, or business cards or tent cards or whatever, a little in from the edge of the label in case the alignment of the print is a little off from the cut of the labels or the perforation of the cards. Try to make this an eighth of an inch as well. When we created the name tags a few minutes ago, we measured the distance for offsetting the merged copies of the design horizontally and vertically by measuring the distance between labels and the template. Now it may be splitting hairs, but that's actually not the correct way to take measurements. You need to measure the distance between rows and columns of artwork. If you extend your artwork beyond the borders of the label or card to create a bleed, you're eating into the horizontal and or vertical gutters between labels. So, Measure the separation between the artwork, not the label edges. On the flip side of the coin, if you keep artwork a safe distance in from the edge of the label, without any artwork extending to the edge of the label or out beyond it, the spacing you set on the multiple record layout tab of the Create Merge Document dialog might need to be larger than the actual space between the label edges. Again, measure from the edges of the artwork, but there's also the matter of margin adjustment. If the left of your artwork is further out than the left edge of the label, your left margin value won't be the margin of the page, but rather the distance from the edge of the page to the edge of the artwork. The same for the top margin. That kind of adjustment is unavoidable when your artwork is larger than the label edges, but when it's smaller, save yourself a little work and fill the space. You can save yourself a little hassle and math if you make your artwork fill the space of each label. 
You can do that without putting something important too close to the edge by using an empty rectangle with no fill and no stroke sized to match the label dimensions. Just put it behind your artwork like so, and then your artwork is the size of your label. So the margins and spacing between columns and rows can be calculated just like we did earlier using the label template. Again, this doesn't work if the artwork is larger than the label, only if it's smaller.